This bulletin is brought to you by Good Morning Vihalia. Enjoy the warmth and indulge in the deliciousness. Good morning, good morning. Hello and good evening ladies and gentlemen. Hundreds of demonstrators gathered at the Putrajaya Mosque this afternoon to demand the sacking of Minister in the Prime Minister's Department P. Weta Murthy over the death of firefighter Muhammad Adit Muhammad Kasim. Led by Garakan Pambela Uma, those present carried banners and photos of Adib. After several NGO leaders delivered their speeches, the group marched to the Prime Minister's office to submit a memorandum. Kita menuntut beberapa perkara yang pertama Weta Murti dan Menteri Sumber Manusia Pula segaran dipecat daripada jawatan Dan kita minta mereka disiasat di bawah Seksyen 186-188-217 Kanun Keseksaan Yang telah membelakangkan undang-undang Seksyen 505 uh, dalam bracket B dan C Kanun Keseksaan Iaitu membuat kenyataan melaga-lagakan Ada antara dua komuniti agama Dan Seksyen 41 Akta Asutan Bersama Seksyen 31E Iaitu mengembangkan perasaan niat jahat Permusuhan dan kebencian antara kaum the memorandum called on the Prime Minister to sack Weta Murthy, whom the group blamed for fanning racial sentiments which led to Adit being attacked during the 27th of November riots outside of the Sri Maha Mariaman Temple in Subang Jaya. An NGO that identifies themselves as Club Lu Langsi Lu Mati, I'm serious, that's how they call themselves, or their abbreviation LLLM, is also calling for the removal of P. Weta Murthy from his post as Minister in the Prime Minister's Department in charge of national unity and social well-being. Its Deputy President Adila Jamaluddin said that Weta Murthy had failed to ease the tension and tackle the issue that surrounded the aforementioned riots in front of the Sri Maha Mariaman Temple. The police are expected to once again question four suspects who were earlier remanded and linked to the assault case involving the late firefighter Muhammad Adib Muhammad Kasim following the reclassification of the case by the police as murder. The Star reported Deputy Inspector General of Police Nur Rashid Ibrahim saying that the police are gathering more evidence in regard to the case. Nur Rashid also said that police had recorded statements from 38 people and that they were in the midst of identifying more people who could furnish evidence on the case. Adib was part of a team of nine fire Firefighters deployed in response to vehicles being torched by rioters outside of the Sri Maha Mariaman Temple in Seafield. According to the police, he was dragged out of the vehicle and assaulted. Investors in the United States of America have filed a class action lawsuit against Goldman Sachs and three of its executives seeking damages over its dealings with one Malaysia development Berhad. According to a court filing cited by Malaysia Kini, the lawsuit states that between the 28th of February 2014 and the 17th of December 2018, Goldman Sachs made a materially false and misleading statement regarding its businesses and operations. The suit said that this includes the information that Goldman participated in a fraud and money laundering scheme in collusion with 1MDB. The fraud and money laundering here refers to the activities of former Goldman executive Tim Lessiner and Roger Ern. Lessiner had in October pleaded guilty to two counts of conspiracy to launder money and conspiracy to violate the United States Foreign Corrupt Practices Act or FCPA. Meanwhile, Roger Ng had been charged in absentia by the United States Department of Justice for conspiring with Joe Lowe to launder billions of dollars embezzled from 1MDB and conspiring to violate FCPA by paying bribes to Malaysian and Abu Dhabi officials. Malaysia's first multi-grains brand, the champion is Good Morning! That's all from me for today, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't forget to hit like, follow, share, and subscribe. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your weekend. And for those celebrating, have a Merry Christmas.